What's up? I'm here to tell you in this video of a coming shift in the housing of America. Listen up. There will be some tips if you want to make some money. One of the largest segments of American housing is van life. Remember Elena and Alfredo the Snake? Van life was popular before the pandemic. Can you imagine how many people right now are sitting around figuring out where are they gonna live? And they're watching these YouTube videos because I watch van life videos and literally they explode. There's usually a single person or sometimes there's a couple. They're living in the van. Often they're traveling and they make it seem so, so exciting. I'm living in the van. There's this guy up in uh, Canada, Chad, living the van life. He's got this Volkswagen van and they make it sound so, you know, he's even got a girlfriend and you got these couples and they're doing these van bills and all this other stuff. This is part of the global reset and it has been going on before the pandemic. So many people are looking at living in a van or living in an RV because it's cheaper than renting an apartment or buying a house. This is 100% fueled by cost, the cost of living. Like they will make it seems like, you know, I'm just a nomad. I don't want to stay in one place. I just want to be out in the world. I want to travel. Mm -mm. That's not what's fueling this. It is cost. Do you know that if you are handy and you wanted to go to Craigslist and buy used vans, it doesn't matter how old these vans are. It doesn't really matter. A lot of people will get a van from the 1970s, 1980s, recondition it and make it livable. Like the girl with her snake Alfredo, I think that's like a 1983 van. Long as it drives, long as you're handy and you can convert this van into a livable habitat, you could, let's say you buy the van for a thousand, you put 500, maybe 2000 in it, you sell it for 4,000 because there's a lot of people who are attracted to van life, but they're not handy. So this is, uh, I'm telling you, this reconditioning vans, in doing them from old, you know, night, because you know, when I was a kid, the conversion vans were a big thing. You know, people would buy a van and put some nice wheels on it and paint it a funky color and put fur and all of this other stuff. It was a really big deal. Now, van life is making a comeback because, let's say, there, there's here on YouTube, there's a fire, the homeless firefighter. This dude who lives in his truck, he has, he, he's employed as a firefighter. He lives in his truck. He has the quirkiest sense of humor. Check him out. So many people are moving to living in a van, living in a truck, living in a car. Literally, each one of those categories, you could go here on YouTube, living in the car, and you will find several YouTubers who are talking about their trials and tribulations of living in the car, living in a van. And also, another big issue that's going to happen is the explosion of trailer parks. There was this show, I forget it was uh, Myrtle Beach, it was about this trailer park. It was hilarious. It was, uh, I forget this guy's name, but Trailer parks are about to, you know, and th this is one of the issues with trailer parks. Many cities and municipalities don't want trailer parks. So there is a premium for older trailer parks, but trailer parks, new trailers, they're making a the comeback because essentially you can get a new trailer for about $20,000. And then if you have your own land, you can buy this trailer potentially in cash or, you know, put $5,000 down and pay it off in three to four years and have a completely paid off residential site. If you have the land, 
See, this is where most people run into a problem. And this is one of the big issues that's happening with many trailer parks. The land is more valuable than the rent that the people who have their trailers parked on this land. So a lot of times that the owner of the land is like, everybody got to go. I'm evicting y'all because I want to build this hotel. I want to repurpose the land and make more money so they will kick them out. So if you're one of those people who want to do the trail of life, you need to have your own land. It's going to make a huge difference because you have your own land. You don't have to pay rent. But I'm here to tell you that in the coming years, you're going to see the explosion of van life, trail of life on my Facebook page. I was posting some articles and things about people living in trailers and to me, it is not the best situation because you position your children for generational poverty by living in the trailer. Now, all trailer parks are not the same. There are some that are nice. I used to live in Stone Mountain, Georgia, and there was a trailer park around the way that was actually not too shabby. The trailers weren't like tightly. They, they actually had a little space between them and apparently they had newer trailers. But these are the coming decisions they're gonna make. So if you could be a person who can buy a trailer for two or $3,000 and flip it for eight, like I'm telling you, reconditioning of vans, buying and flipping trailers, this is gonna be a lot of money for the people who are participating in these marketplaces because the demand is going to be sky high. I want you to think there are people who got caught up in this pandemic and these people got punched in the face. They were one day they were working, the next day they weren't working. And then all of these bills and they're, they're starting evictions again. So there's a looming eviction crisis. There are many people who are two or three months behind on their rent and they're about to be evicted. So what does this do? It's going to make it hard for them to rent some other place and they don't have a job. They see, you know, they're going to be living in a the van. They're going to be living in their car. They're going to be living in the RV. So all these categories, trailer living, RV living, van living, car living are about to skyrocket. And if you want to start a business, I'm going to tell you what you do. You start a YouTube channel. And he's like, hey, my name is John. And what I do is recondition vans. And this is my current project. You would make money from doing YouTube by showing how you recondition the van. You would buy the van. I mean, seriously, you, you could go ahead and do the whole process here on YouTube, buying the van, painting the van, fixing the van, turning the van into a livable habitat. And they're like, hey, this was, hey, this is John, the van reconditioner. Today, I got for sale this van. It will be sold within hours of you posting the video. Hours. Hours. I'm, I'm, I'm here to tell you that if you want to get into something, you want to make some money, this is, a, this is a, going to be a lucrative side hustle for you and see, it, it just won't be the bargain basement people. There are people who are in a good, who, who got $30,000, dollars $50,000 in the bank who are thinking about living in van life and they don't want to live in the old rundown van. They will spend this money on a new uh, Sprinter, a Mercedes-Benz Sprinter van. And you, I mean, you could, you, could, you could start off with the used vans, get your capital up, to where you can get to a Sprinter van and you will be able to buy a Sprinter van, convert it and sell it for 50, 60,000. Cause see there, there's gonna be levels to this. There's gonna be people who are gonna be like, I only got four, I only got $6,000 and they're gonna buy that van from you. Which means you gotta be very careful how you buy your vans. But there will be multiple levels in this category. Uh, I've seen people like this Travago, this Winnebago Travago is a Dodge Ram van. Dodge Ram van. It's like a hundred thousand dollars, a hundred thousand dollars. So you're going to have multiple buckets in this category. 
And if you want to get into the, like seriously, start a YouTube channel, give it some kind of funky name, show the process of how you recondition the vans, you paint the vans and put it up for sale. And then you can even do a video like today, the van Sandy has a new home, John and Carol. And John and Carol, what are you gonna do? Oh, well, we're gonna cruise the Pacific, you know, we're gonna pursue the, the West Coast. We're gonna hang out on the beach, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this. I'm serious. You think I'm kidding. If I wasn't so deep in what I am doing, I would do this channel because I'm telling you, you're gonna get YouTube money. You will get YouTube money because you will get a lot of views and you will get everyone who creates products for vans. Like, hey, today this is Chad from Living the Van Reconditioning Life. And today I want to thank our sponsor, COVID, COVID, get it? COVID refrigerators. Everyone that makes refrigerators, that makes power plants, that make battery packs, these could be your sponsors. Literally, you can make more money from the sponsorship of your van conversion channel. I'm surprised there is no one that's done this because I'm going to do a little search on this. But literally, and you can reach out to these manufacturers and like, hey, I have a YouTube channel and what I do and tell them and they're going to be like, oh, gassed. Really? So you could, you could be sponsoring the batteries, you could be sponsoring the solar panels on top of the vans, you could be sponsoring, hey, today's video is brought to you by Sutton Sinks. This is the perfect little sink, doesn't take up a lot of space. The, the, the ways that you can make money from this are endless because you would make AdSense money because I'm telling you, just do a little research and look at these van life channels and then you will and then also you're selling a product you could go ahead and like hey this is the beginning of our new product we just bought this van went on craigslist got the and you can be a hundred percent transparent you could talk about how much you bought the van for you could talk about how much what cost you put into reconditioning the van and then you can also get YouTube money, sponsorship money, and money from selling the van. This can be a six-figure business first year. But once again, you gotta be kind of one of those van life people. Van life people are different. I mean, it's a different kind of person than we're living in. I ain't never living in no van. I don't even stay in less than a five-star hotel, so I'm, I'm not living in a van, it, it ain't gonna happen. But if you can tap into that marketplace, I mean, they have meetups, they do van tours. They, I'm telling you, it's a whole nother community of people. And some of these people are just like, I want to be free. Some of these people are like, I ain't living in no house. There, there's one guy, uh, RV living, this guy, older guy, with a, he looks like Santa Claus with the, the white beard. He makes enough money from his YouTube channel, he can live anywhere he wants to. And he just prefers living in the van because he's actually said that. He said, well, I can live wherever I want to because I think his YouTube channel does about eight to $12,000 a month plus whatever else money come in so he could live somewhere else, but he chooses to live in the van. And you know, for me, there, there's just a few problems like using the bathroom in the middle of the night. I'm like in the van, I gotta, I gotta go, I gotta go find the bathroom. That, that's just like, that ain't for me. I'm a creature of comfort. I like having multiple bathrooms where I can go do my business. Uh, I, and also, I'm not a nomad. When I had this one job that was traveling, they hired me, it's like it was 30% travel. When I got the job, it was like literally 70% travel and that just broke me. I didn't like living out of a suitcase. I did not like just living that kind of life, but there are people who would live that kind of life for the exchange of the economic benefit, like the firefighter dude, the homeless firefighter, check out his channel. He saved up $85,000 in one year. What he did is he lived in his truck and he worked all the overtime that he could. And he's out in California, so he's making a, a good coin. 
But once again, you're going to see the explosions. I mean, I'm like right now I'm watching videos of people living in trailers and trailer parks. And that's a whole different mentality because there's this one trailer park It's completely run down. There's um, cars that aren't working all over the place. It, it's, it, it's not paved. <clears throat> and there's these little pick and nanny kids running around it. And that's not one of the things. And if you want to go through the trials and tribulations of developing a new mobile home park, like literally, if you got some money, I mean, you, if you can go out and buy you land, get you seven, 10 acres, go ahead and run the water and the power through this and go and literally just put some, you can buy you a trailer for $5,000. So if you had a hundred grand and you spent like X amount on um, the land and you got yourself about 20 trailers and run an ad on Craigslist, you would have renters immediately. Trailer rent, 500 bucks. So you got 20 trailers at $500 a month. That's $10,000 a month. Literally, if you spend a hundred grand setting this up, you will get your hundred grand back within one year. And at this point, it becomes a cash cow. This is something that I'm thinking about doing because it's going to be so accessible. You know, it's going to be a lot easier for someone to come up with $500 per month versus 1500 bucks per month. And also for many people who are making like minimum wage, what is minimum wage? Seven fifty an hour. So they work 40 hours, they get 280. So literally two paychecks would pay their rent. I mean, it's something I'm thinking about because I got to look into it because if you go out and you find the right land that's accessible because it can't be way out yonder, you know, but if you can get some land, go ahead and get it set up have pads and put in some nice trailers. Matter of fact, I need to go ahead and do some research on the cost of trailers because you can get a used trailer for two to 5,000 bucks. So go ahead and get this trailer in there. And if you want to make more money, you just furnish the trailers, rent it, furnish trailer. You can get 750 per month. Easy. And I guarantee you, if you built this, this land and get you 20 trailers, you will be rented within the first month because there are people who are standing in line for cheap rent, who are looking for cheap rent, who are desperate for cheap rent, who want that cheap rent. So I just gave you two business models. One, you can start with 2,500 bucks. The, the second one, you're going to need a little money. You're going to need about 50 to a hundred K, but you get your money back within a year or in a year and a half. And then it becomes a cash cow. You got like $10,000 a month coming in automatically. And also like, I don't know if y'all guys know this. I used to own the boarding house. You gonna have a different kind of clientele. Just put it out there. Uh, it's, it's a different mentality, but these are going to be growth industries for the next decade. Like do a little research. Don't take my word for it. Check out van life, car life, RV life, and start doing a little research on trailers because you know, there's a double wide. And like, if you were, if you had a little, some finances and you created this trailer park, or you can actually, once again, what you can do is buy the land, buy the trailer, and then put someone on the note. Let's say the land costs you 3,000, the trailer costs you five, so you got $8,000, and it's like, hey, I'm gonna sell this land and this trailer to you for $27,000 on the payment plan, and I'm gonna put you on um, maybe a three or four year payment plan. So your first year, you get your $8,000 back. Your second year, you're in the profit. Your third year, in your profit. There are so many ways to do this because I'm, I'm telling you that the marketplaces for these products are developing like 
crazy right now. So you can buy a trailer, buy the land, and then sell the trailer to whoever wants it on terms. I'm telling you, th these are going to be growth industries because people don't have no money, man. People going to be living in trailers. People going to live in cars. People going to be living in the RVs. And they will deal with the inconveniences of not having a lot of space, not being able to go to the bathroom. Well, also, if you wanted to get into this reconditioning, because, you know, I haven't checked out RV sales because there's many people who were in a position to buy an RV. So I need to do some research on that. But I'm telling you, van life, trailer life, RV life, car life, it's about to boom. And if you got a little money and you're a little handy, I'm telling you, this is a good way for you to make some money. I'm telling you right now, go on Craigslist, look up old vans. And once you go ahead and get your capital base up, you can buy a Sprinter van, recondition it. And I'm talking about a $20,000 van and put $10,000 in it and sell it for $50,000, $60,000. There are people who are doing this literally around the world. Van life, car life, trailer life. You can get in an action because I'm, I'm really thinking about doing this mobile home thing because it would be a way for me to get into real estate and not spend a lot of money. Because literally I could go out and get 20 or 30 of these land purchases and trailer purchases and sell them and literally have 30 people paying me monthly notes. First year I get my money back, second year I'm in the profit, third, because I'm telling you, this is what's happening in America. Like Donald Trump, now Donald, Donald pissed! Donald upset, because folks didn't show up to his rally. Donald, the Rona is real. I know you want to pretend that the Rona ain't real, you know, staff getting sick, People on your campaign getting sick. The Rona real. The Rona is real, man. And one of the things that you, you got to understand is this thing is real and the economic impact is real. So if you want to go ahead, get yourself together, get yourself some money, go ahead and start providing services and products for these people who are looking for vans, who are looking for trailers, even RVs, I don't even know. Like maybe you can buy an old RV and recondition it and fix it up. I mean, th this is gonna be money. You can be flipping, flipping RVs. You can be flipping whatever you need and vans. I have even seen people stay in like caravan, which to me seems tight, but people are making these kind of decisions because they're money. Cause see, this is one of the things. They are not making these decisions based upon their income. Their income is dictating their lifestyle. And we've talked about this. You don't want your income to dictate your lifestyle. You want your mental and desires to dictate your lifestyle. So you raise your income up. But right now there are many people who've, who, who've never seen this channel, who don't know about the principles of the do more principles. So they're going to be out here and they're going to be prime opportunity for you. I mean, seriously, after I get off this video, I'm about to do some research on trailers. I might, I might have me one in a month, get it, get the land and the trailer for eight, then flip it to someone for 30. Hey, capitalism. If I can do that like 30 times, whoo, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of cash flow. And it's going to be really accessible because the lower social, the lower social economic strata is about to expand and they're going to need cheap products and they're going to need services. And that could be you. It could be you because I'm here to tell you it's about to explode. So go ahead, get 30 days to 2,500 to help you with your entrepreneur enterprises and check out this next video that's gonna be right here.